lot of progress in the last six months, and I'd like to give you some updates, tell you about some new stuff, and then we got some fun stuff to demo for you, if that's okay. So let's start off. We started thinking different about six months ago. And the first uh, sign of that that people could buy, we announced on November 10th, which was a very different ship, a very different store, and a very different fashion. And I'd like to give you some updates on those things now. It's been, it was 51 days before the end of the quarter on November 10th when we announced it was 57 days ago today. And uh, so I'd like to go through each one and tell you where we're at. First of all, for those of you who were not at November 10th, we introduced a very different ship. Of course, that ship was the, G, the PowerPC G3, uh, developed by Motorola and IBM. The thing's a screamer, and it's just wonderful. Now, the Power PC, the Power PC is an incredibly sweet part of its life cycle now for the next few years. And the chips that are coming out, I think, are going to are going to toast Pentiums every step of the way. So when we look at when we look at the Power PC. G3, and we compare it against uh, Intel's fastest uh, processor class, the Pentium 2s, uh, they're much faster on integer performance and on floating point. As a matter of fact, on integer, they're 44% faster, and on floating point, uh, they're 15% faster. This is really good. And when you actually do real world stuff, we took, uh, I think, uh, approximately uh, 16 Photoshop tasks and uh, ran through them one by one in an automated fashion in each of the machines. It's on a, on a Pentium. 266, Pentium 2, 266. This thing took uh, over 800 seconds. On a Pentium 2, 300, uh, it took over 700 seconds. And of course, on the G3, 266, it took a little over 600 seconds. So this gives you a feeling for how fast these chips are. And we built these, we built three systems around these chips that could really deliver the performance of the raw chip. The first one was our desktop system. Second was the mini tower. And the third was our G3 portable, which is you know twice as fast as the fastest Pentium portable you can buy. And so we also price these things pretty aggressively. Uh, we still want to make a little bit of margin, but we really need to be matching the prices of the PC industry much more closely. We've got that message, and the response has been phenomenal for these products. Uh, the review response has been great, and everybody understands that these products are wickedly fast. And um, that's the primary message. Now, when we went into the quarter, we were forecasting that we would sell 80,000 of the combined G3 product line. And uh, we were wrong. We were wrong. The reaction was so great that we actually shipped over 130,000. <laughs> is that we did it uh, in a matter of 51 days in quarter. And that was due to a lot of work by the engineering teams to make this a rock-solid product that was incredibly easy to build, and by the operations team that worked very long hours to build these products, did a fantastic job, and the sales teams. And everybody at Apple worked really hard to make this possible, including a lot of our partners outside Apple. Now, what's, what's really neat is if you annualize this, that's a rate of a million computers a year. A million G3s a year in our first 60 days. And that means that although it wasn't a third of our unit shipments in the last quarter, because we only shipped them for 51 days, at this rate, they've already climbed to over a third of our unit shipments in terms of an annualized rate. And I think you're going to see that continue to climb this coming quarter. So we, we could not be happier. I'm, I'm told that there were some problems with new product introductions from Apple in the past. And having been through a lot of new product intros myself, I can tell you that I have not seen any that are any, have been any smoother. This went really, really well. Which brings us to a very different story. We distribute our products in a lot of ways. We're a large company. We are North America. And this type of a system is parallel in Asia and in Europe. Now, we have been doing a very significant tune-up to this distribution channel. We went out and shopped all of the channels, and we found that in some, they were great. 
And in many, the buying experience could be worse. It was worse than your worst nightmare. And so we went out to a lot of these folks and said, you've got to clean up the buying experience here. And we had some partners say, this is awesome. We had some partners say, well, we have other things to do. And so we really focused on our channel. And I want to tell you, I've given two updates here. The first is CompUSA. CompUSA said, we want to be partners with you guys. We were with Apple in the beginning, and uh, we, we know you guys are coming back. So we put together a program with CompUSA uh, to put an Apple store within a store in each of their 140, 150 locations in the U.S. And rather than waiting, rather than waiting a year to plan this out in the typical Apple fashion, so it would be perfect, we said, let's just go. Everything's not going to be perfect at day one. Let's build these stores. Let's get them done as fast as we can. Everybody won't be trained on day one. We have a very significant training program going on right now. Let's go. And we built 57 of these stores already, and the rest are going to be built by February. And let me give you a tour of one right now. Um, we've got a uh, quick time VR over here. So we can switch over to that, and uh, let me uh, drive here. So here we are. Uh, here's the parking lot, as you can see. So we can swing around from the parking lot, and uh, let's just go on in there. Go right on in there. Boom. And here's the inside of the store. There's the Apple store within the store in the corner, as you can see. Let me just uh, turn around and take a look. There's the rest of the store right here. And there's the Apple store, and as you can see, you can see it very easily. So let's just wander over there. Let's go on in. And there's the Apple store within the store in front of USA. Right here. And uh, as you can see, there's some software right here, of course, the brand advertising. We can walk on in. And here we are, and there's all these kiosks around the store. This one's for design and publishing, there's for education, etc. And again, here's when we just come in here from the store right here. There's the band, the backs of the banners, as you can see. Here's some uh, accessories here, you know, scanners, printers, all sorts of things like that. And uh, Every single system we make is displayed here. And you can see, as you can see up above, see all these boxes up there, all the Apple boxes? And you can see this wall of software right here. So let's go back and see the systems right now. Here's all the portables that we make. And uh, you swing around, you can see, uh, here's the CPUs. And here is that wall of software. It's terrific, actually. Let's go ahead and just walk a little closer. You can see System 8, a bunch of other software here. A bunch of boxes up there. Again, all of the branding. And that gives you an idea for the store. So, it looks really great. How's it working? In October, before any of these stores went live, our sales of CPUs, the ratio of max CPU sales to the total CompUSA CPU sales was 3%. We were 3% of their CPU sales. We got 57 stores installed. In those 57 stores, in the month of December, we were 14% of the stores. And the rest of the stores will be in by the end of February, and we're just beginning. And this represents a tremendous opportunity for our software partners, software developers as well, to get their software back in these stores. We could not be happier with how this is going. Another thing we couldn't be happier about is the Apple Store. The Apple Store debuted uh, on November 10th. As you know, we have a good, better, best paradigm in the store, and you can completely customize the products any way you want them. We have hundreds of configurations for our G3 products, as you see here. And of course, you can buy over the store, and you can have stuff shipped to you. And what's really great about this is not only have we set a new standard out there for sophistication and simplicity for online commerce. But the Apple Store has become one of the top-selling e-commerce sites on the web in its first 30 days. And even beyond that, we are getting millions of hits a day. And people are using this as the ultimate online configurator. Figure out what they want to buy. And then they're buying, some are buying it on the store. And most are going back out to the dealers and the resellers out there to buy their products, which is great, too. So we, we could not be happier about this. And build to order. Build to order 
was designed to give our customers a lot more choice. So they didn't have to buy what they didn't need, and so they could configure their systems exactly as they wanted to. It was also designed to dramatically simplify inventory at the dealers and the distributors and at Apple. And to provide instant availability of new components and configurations, so we don't have to wait a few months to see these things slowly move through the channel to the end customer. And everybody, our resellers and our education customers, will be buying from us this way as well by the end of this current quarter. Think different. We needed to get back on the air. Uh, when I got to Apple, there were a, over a dozen different ad campaigns running. None of them funded enough to get any visibility. All of them having made some conflicting messages with many others. It was crazy. We unified it down to one campaign, Think Different. And I think it really was great. Because what it communicated was what we care about. And um, I think a lot of people got a chance to see it, especially in our major metropolitan markets. And you'll see a lot more advertising from us this quarter. We do not intend to stop. One of the most wonderful forms of flattery is imitation. And we got copied a lot uh, right away. Uh, and we got copied uh, two times in particular that I wanted to show you today. Uh, one was uh, Think Dharma. Did you see that one? <laughs> I didn't watch, I don't watch television much, so I didn't see it. But people brought the video and showed you it was terrific. And the other was Think Funny. Have you seen this one? No? I'd like to show you. Square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. And they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Disagree with her, but most of all, you'll love her. And while some people may see her as silly, we see genius. Because the people who think they're funny enough to change television are the ones who do. Here's to the funny ones, the knuckleheads, the class clowns of this world. Sure, you can chuckle, chortle, even guffaw at them. Their spit takes and one-liners push Monday nights forward. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can make you laugh are the ones who do. So in the 51 days we've made it into popular culture. I'd also like to thank uh, our ad agency, Shia Day, for helping us capture the spirit of Apple. So now, we've got a few things to announce today in terms of new products. I'd like to go through them with you. The first is, we're not stopping after 51 days with our G3 products. We've got some new pro add-ins to announce today, and you'll see continuing add-ins every few months to these products. So, these are available off our website, Build to Order, starting today. And they are available in a reseller configuration starting today. The first one is, uh, on the networking side, a 100 megabit Ethernet card for $100. The second is on the hard drive side, in addition to the IDE drives you can get, a 4 gigabyte ultra SCSI drive and a 9 gigabyte ultra-wide SCSI drive, both available today. Uh, and the last one is a 128-bit Pro Graphics card with 8 megabytes of uh, video memory, again, available today. Okay. Next is Mac OS 8.1. We have been putting a lot of energy into getting our software team uh, 
on a regular basis. They've done a phenomenal job. System 8 has been a giant win for us. We've sold almost 3 million copies. And the response has been very, very strong on System 8. We have 8.1 to announce today. 8.1 fixes a zillion bugs, of course, and adds some significant performance. Some of the apps actually launch up to 30% faster on System 8.1. So there's some pretty nice stuff in there. Secondly, an enhancement to our HFS file system called HFS Plus, which basically is designed to be optimized for much larger disk drives. It actually gives you a lot of disk space back in the files you have currently stored under HFS when you store them with HFS Plus. And it's much higher performance on large disk drives. Third, to use the digital video disks, you need a new file system that supports the universal data format, or UDF. No operating systems have this built in at this time. And Mac OS 8.1 is the first in the world to have it built in. Apple's performance on Java, we love Java, and Apple's performance on Java has not been best of breed. We have a great team working on that stuff now inside Apple. And we are working very closely with Sun. We're working very closely with Microsoft. And we are getting better. And so 8.1 ships with a new Java runtime and JDK 1.13. So we will continue to improve these things, continue to get new Java releases out on the website. And I hope the next time that we meet, we can say that we are second to no one in Java performance. And lastly, Internet Explorer ships as the default browser on 8.1. You can switch it back to Navigator if you'd like. But many people happen to prefer Explorer. And uh, it's a very good browser. 8.1 is free for all Mac OS 8.0. systems in February, but uh, there are rumors that it might even be on the website before then. So 8.1. team has done a fantastic job. Thank you. <laughs> Next is QuickTime 3.0. Uh, we have narrowed down the things we are focusing on technically so that we can really put a lot of energy behind each one. I still get hate mail about canceling over now. And uh, we have canceled a lot of things. And the results of that start to show as we deliver on the things that we think really matter. And quick time is one of them. It is one of the pillars of what we do. And it is the standard for multimedia on computers in the world. And we intend to keep pushing that standard forward. So today, we're, we've already announced QuickTime 3.0. We're kind of formally announcing it today. We'll show you exactly what it is. One of the best ways to look at something is to contrast it against something else. And one of the good things about QuickTime is we haven't had any competitors. Uh, Microsoft has chosen not to compete with it, um, indeed, anyway. And, and so <laughs> finally someone's coming along saying, hey, we kind of want to compete with QuickTime a little bit, and that's great, and that's real networks, and, and we think that's very healthy. So I'd like to use them to compare and contrast some of the really cool things about QuickTime 3.0, if you don't mind. Um, so let's see how they stack up. 